Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. As we continue to worship from the comfort of your own homes, your cottage, your trailer, wherever you may be this weekend. It's hard to believe it's almost Canada Day, a day we get to celebrate the beautiful country that we are so blessed to live in. Next Sunday begins our shared summer series along with Quispamsis United and Hampton United. And for those services of the summer, we invite you to find a rock, a small rock to have with you on Sunday mornings as we gather for worship and as we gather to take time to pray. Uh, just a reminder throughout the summer, if you are away from an internet connection and you want to be able to hear a worship service, I will continue to record worship services over our telephone line, and that line is advertised in our announcements, and you will be able to find the number there. If anyone is celebrating a birthday today or this week, blessings to you for your birthday and for the year to come. Today, as we worship, we light our Christ candle. The Spirit dances amongst us, and the light reminds us that Jesus is the light of this church and the light of the world. Our opening song this morning is Let Us Build a House. take time to worship. Let us worship God with great joy. Let us praise God who lifts our hearts and spirits. Let us be the voice of welcome, the spirit of joy, and the one who opens our hearts to God. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Open our lives to new experiences. Open our hearts to a greater love, so all may be warmed by your presence today and always. Maybe when you go to the dentist, or you go to the doctor, or you go for a test at the hospital, or maybe you get stickers on your birthday cards, or maybe you just get stickers because you like stickers. Well, nothing makes somebody more proud than showing off a new sticker. It gives them this feeling of pride and accomplishment. It's a proof of a job well done. Well, children aren't the only ones who like to get rewards. God knows that all of us, big or small, are also motivated by rewards. And the Bible contains so many stories and promises of rewards for those who are faithful to God's teachings. When Jesus was sending out his 12 disciples, he warned, warned them that being a disciple wasn't going to be easy. That they may often be mistreated or they may often be rejected. He also promised that God would reward those who received his disciples with kindness and those that would welcome the disciples into their homes, into their life, and for those that were kind to them. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The words of our scripture that we'll hear again in a few minutes. I guess stickers are a pretty good reward for doing something good at school or for keeping your room clean or your home tidy or maybe for just acting really good. But they don't compare to how we feel when we think about how God is pleased with us. So we need to remember that. As we go through the summer, we need to remember about how the disciples were called out and when they were called out they didn't know how they were going to be treated but they were always told they had to treat each other with kindness and with respect so i want you to make sure that this summer as you're out and about if you're in any camps or any programs or playing on any sports teams that you're always treating each other with love with respect and with kindness We'll say a little prayer. God, help us to be faithful to your teachings each day. Help us to welcome those who come to us and care for others as we offer even a cold cup of water in your name. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 10, 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's award. And if anyone gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you that person will not lose their reward. Hear these words from our holy book. I was thinking about that scripture a few weeks ago as I was starting to put my mind around some reflections. And I wanted to start this morning by sharing a story, one that maybe some of you have heard or you might have even encountered a similar experience. It's a story about a girl named Josie. Josie went to church one day, having never been to this specific church before. It had been a long time since Josie had even darkened the door of a church. Lots of things had happened in her life some good and far too many bad. She had made some choices that she wasn't so proud of along the way. 
And because of these, she wasn't sure if church was the place that she should go. She always used the excuse that maybe something would happen if she walked into church. Well, this particular Sunday, she got ready, she headed to church. She got there, she approached the doors, the doors were open. A little way inside, there stood this lady, very well dressed, wearing white gloves, and said, good morning. The woman said it with a little bit of hesitation and sort of extending her hand out to shake hands, but not quite. Josie reached out to shake a hand, but only the gloved fingertips were offered with a slight shake of the hand, quickly withdrawn from this welcoming gesture. The woman seemed in a little hurry to greet other people. Josie looked around and looked for the direction to the sanctuary. She noticed that there were other people talking, very interested in each other's conversation. She moved toward the people whose conversation took, took a sudden turn. They stopped took, talking and looked at her. She was a stranger to them. They were involved with their friends and maybe somebody else would greet this stranger. She took a seat near the back of the church. She looked around. Everyone was greeting one another. Obviously, they knew each other. She felt a little awkward. What should she do? Pretty soon, the worship service began with some wonderful music and words of welcome, and the minister suggested that everyone take a moment to greet each other with the love of Christ. This was going to be awkward, thought Josie. She stood up as the movement of the people around the sanctuary began. Suddenly, she felt the tapping on her leg. She looked down to find a small child. Hi, said the little child. Hi, replied Josie. Who are you, asked the child. Well, I'm Josie, who are you? Timmy, just Timmy. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Timmy. Are you new here, inquired Timmy. Josie replied that it was her first time being there. Well, I'm not new. I've been here a long time and I get to say hi to everyone. It's my favorite thing to do. Josie complimented Timmy and said that he does that very well. He welcomed her there. He made her feel welcome. Josie didn't remember being greeted by others, although she probably was. Timmy's, Timmy's innocent, warm welcome stayed in her heart. Whoever welcomes one of these the least and the lost welcomes me, said the minister. Welcome to the house of the Lord. She quickly put all those thoughts that she had when she first walked through the door out of her mind. When I was looking through my own Bible, looking at this reading, the title ahead of it said, Rewards. It seemed fitting. It seemed fitting enough, as there does indeed seem to be a certain emphasis on the rewards to be received by those who welcome not only Jesus, but those who represent him. Again, given the mission that Jesus was about to send his disciples into, as well as the turbulent setting of Matthew's readers, that makes a great deal of sense. And admittedly, it doesn't make for the easiest reading, as the repetition of the various whoever welcomes sounds just a bit hard to grasp sometimes. But it still makes sense. For after issuing some fairly clear warnings around the importance of acknowledging Jesus and outlining some of the requirements and cost of the disciples, Jesus returns to the reward for faithfulness and invites the disciples both then and now, to keep their eyes on the prize. What doesn't make sense, at least at first, and in a totally surprising and delightful kind of way, is the last verse. Whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones. Such a small thing. And after all this talk of rewards, I would have thought that the concrete action specified would be, I don't know, just maybe a little bit bigger. It's just a cup of cold water to one of these little ones. We don't know who the little ones are. I assume they are those among 
the most vulnerable surrounding Jesus, or perhaps in Matthew's community. But what strikes me is the simplicity of what it's called for. Just a cup of cold water given to someone in need in the name of a disciple of Jesus. What might that translate in our own life? Let's think back to over the last few months, maybe some things that we can do for one another or have done for one another to still be part of a welcoming church, even though we are gathering in our own areas, in our own homes, in our own yards. And maybe we're not in within this building right now, but we can still be a welcoming church because after all, the church is the people. So I want you to think about how this translates into your own life. A hug to someone who is hurting, a listening ear, an encouraging word, a helping hand, volunteering somewhere, maybe that's at a shelter, maybe it's at Romero House, maybe it's in the community, maybe it's helping somebody that you know within their own yard or in their own home. Going out of your way to say something kind rather than avoiding someone who lives on the street. Offering your time, offering your support to a charity or to a group that you will have interest in. I don't know, but I suspect that there are so many opportunities to offer cups of cold water almost everywhere we look. And that when you boil that down, Seems it's all it takes to be a disciple, to acknowledge Jesus, to share in the prophet's reward. No Herrera, her, excuse me, getting tongue twisted. No acts of being a hero, although those are no doubt welcome. Just minor acts of compassion and small gestures of grace. Because in the end, when you reach out with the love of Christ to another, there is no small gesture. Remember to keep your eyes open to those around you, to those around you in needs of that cup of cold water, especially in the coming weeks and in the coming months. And kindle your hearts to respond in love and action. Amen. As we continue to live our lives as disciples of Jesus in a new way for this time, take notice of how you are or hope to live the call of Jesus to follow him. The ministries of St. David's continue to live our call by our hope-filled connection through worship and pastoral care, through prayer and through outreach. Our ministry continues and we give thanks to the generous giving by all whom are a part and connected to our congregation and to others who offer generosity in the midst of these days. Please know that your church is here for you and we give thanks that you are here for our church and our ministry, remember your min remember the ministry that we offer happens through your prayers, your actions, and your giving. Loving God, bless the offerings received through envelope, through e-transfer, and through PAR that enables us to continue ministry in your name. Amen. As we take time for prayer this morning, I invite you just to settle your hearts, and your minds and join us in prayer loving God we give thanks for the beautiful weather that we have been enjoying over the last week we are so grateful God we talk so easily about being a friendly church and lately we realize more and more that people are the church we want our welcome to extend beyond these walls and out into the community and into the world. We are learning so much more every day. We are called to adopt attitudes of hospitality to others who may not return the favor. We are called to be willing to take the risk of hospitality in our workplace, in our homes, in our community, and everywhere we go. You reached out to people in all kinds of conditions. Many of those people had been rejected by their society and their families. They were in need of compassion, compassionate greeting and friendship. Today we pray for those who are feeling lost. 
those who are lonely, those who are dealing with medical challenges, those who are dealing with change or loss of employment. We pray for those who are grieving. May they feel your loving presence and may they feel comfort and strength. We pray for all those that we hold close to our own hearts. We bring these prayers to you and wish to be a welcoming presence to all in your name. Amen. As we close our worship for this morning, we'll join our voice in singing, Go Make a Difference. Thank you. 